Hi, welcome to Dean Park, I'm Dave Watson. Hope you're well. Um, at the moment here at Dean Park, the weather's been pretty pretty shocking, so it's allowed the, the modelling season to kind of prolong a little bit. So we're now into, uh, you know, nearly coming up for mid-June and the weather outside is still cold enough for me to get some work done on the layout, which is great news for the layout, maybe not so good news for the, the garden and other outdoor uh, pursuits. I've got a spotlight video for you today. Um, in this one, it's a review of the Class 37 limited edition, Loch Awe, and this is from the Michelover Model Railway Group. This is not on general lease yet, but I've been given one of the first um, models to land on the shores to have a look at and review. Hope you enjoy the video. If you have any questions on this particular model, please do get in touch. Remember, if you like the video, click on the like icon and also the share icon to share it to other people. If you've not subscribed to my channel yet, um, click on the subscribe button and the wee icon down at the bottom right hand side of the screen there will allow you to get access to my channel to all of my other uploaded videos. Hope you enjoy the video. Cheers just now. Before I look at the model itself, I'd like to go through some of the prototype information um, of the local actually in service. This has got some good feedback from the folks that watch the videos, as sometimes you buy a model and you don't actually know, you know where it operated or what period or you know, what specific depots it worked from. So um, I'll give you a quick run through of the prototype of 37026. This local was numbered 6726 when it appeared from the English Electric's Vulcan Foundry in September 1961 and it was first allocated to the Stratford Depot. It became 37026 in February 1974. In 1980, after an overhaul at Doncaster, it moved to Scotland and it was based at Eastfield and it retained its steam heating equipment for use on passenger services in the Scottish Highlands. It was named Loch Awe on the 6th of October 1981 by Lord Maclean and he was the Lord Lieutenant of Argyllshire. That's a bit of a mouthful, I'll tell you. Um, at, that was done at uh, Glasgow Queen Street Station. And it was a part of a theme to uh, twin the Scottish traction to the, the Highland routes. The name was removed on the 30th of June 1986 when it was transferred to 37409 um, as part of the uh, 374s coming on stream. The local was started out in BR Green with no warning panels but gained the panels in 1962 and it then gained its BR Blue livery in the late 60s. When it was named, it gained small Eastfield Scotty Dog logos and red buffer beams, and in late 1984, it gained black painted head code boxes. However, this was short-lived, um, as it received a fresh coat of paint in the form of the large logo livery in April 85, and um, it also gained a high-intensity Halford-style um, headlight, and that was the kind of thing you'd find in a rally car at the time. It was very much an ad hoc um, alteration. As it was displaced by the 37 fours on the Highland services, it was moved to Motherwell um, where it was working on freight traffic in and around the British Steel Works at Hunterston and Ravenscraig. And shortly after, it was renumbered into 37300. During the renumbering on the 23rd of July 1986, it was renamed Shap Fell and the boiler plate was isolated and the boiler port was plated over. This model is the latest limited edition from Michelover Model Railway Club. The Backman code for this is 37-779Z and it's a class 370, number 37026, Loch Awe, and it's in BR Blue. It's one of the few in the country and at the time of filming is not on general release. If you wish to pre-order this model, then the, uh, the link is at the bottom of the screen and I'll also do a, a little clip at the end to show you um, the website as well. There are not many left on pre-order, so if you want one, uh, you may have to be quick. The model is a standard Backman 37, which is no bad thing. Detail is good and accurate, and on the whole, Backman have captured the profile of the 37 well. It's notoriously difficult to capture the three arched windows on classes such as the 37, 40 and 45 in model form, but I feel that looking at the model, it certainly gives a good look of the English electric locomotive. 
People can argue about the proportions, but overall the Backman 37, which I believe is the only current 37 on sale, um, is certainly the best all rounder. Looking at the nose, it's a split head code 37, and the doors in between the split head code marker lights um, would have been used for double heading so they can, the driver could move from one local to the other. These were very rarely used, and um, they turned out to be very drafty for the actual driver, so they were plated over and sealed. I really like the split head code 37s, I think they, they, they just look better than the, uh, the standard um, central head code. On the local itself there are separately fitted grab rails and lamp irons. The lamp irons are perhaps a bit on the heavy side, um, but they do blend in well with the rugged nature of the workhorse. One very nice touch uh, is the overhead um, warning flashes. At one end the local has the old 1970s uh, style and the other end has the newer version. So, that's quite a nice little bit of um, research there which has been depicted on this model. The model depicts the 37 without cowlings at the buffers and this cutaway design allows sprung buffers to be fitted. These are nicely sprung and are of the correct type for 37026. Incidentally the Backman locos with the cowlings do not have sprung buffers. The buffer beam is picked out in the correct shade of red um, for this particular loco it really sets the model apart from most of my other 37s, which is a welcome touch. Buffer beam on the 37s from Backman is somewhat limited. In order to get a realistic looking buffer beam, it's very simple to drill a couple of extra holes into the, the plastic of the, the chassis, in this case the, the, the red part, and fit a couple of extra pipes. I only ever fit detail to one end, so I've usually got plenty of spare pipes that I can use um, to further detail the, uh, the driving end. The side profile of the local reveals the authentic rail blue that was applied to this actual locomotive when in service. Uh, the Michelover Model Railway Club have ensured authentic colours uh, specific to this local um, and they've reproduced them on the limited edition model. It has these field markings with a very attractive Scotty Dog emblem. Um, just a quick comment on the paint finish. Um, it's basically flawless. Um, there's a very even, flaw-free coverage and there's no hazing or imperfections at all, so it's really good news. If you look closely, the model also has accurate positions of the ED depot codes, which have been deliberately given different spacing um, as per on the real local. This really shows attention to detail, allowing you to have a model which is really authentic and individually detailed. From the box, the model has printed Loch Awe nameplates. Uh, a lot of people watching this may pronounce it as Loch Awe, but it's Loch. A Loch is a Scottish name for a lake. If I had one pound for every time somebody pronounced this incorrectly, um, I'd probably have the size of layout of Pete Waterman's, to be honest. Anyway, back to the model. Uh, the detail does contain specifically redrawn um, Shaw Plan Extreme Etch nameplates um, if you want to fit them. I tend not to fit them because I'm scared of making a mess and getting glue everywhere. I've run this local in on the test track and it's a smooth, quiet motor without any issues at present. I know some previous Backman 37s can run like a bag of nails, I've got a couple myself. Um, but this model, along with the other Michelover Limited Edition 37 that I've got, um, are good runners. So I don't know if Backman have maybe tweaked and upgraded the, the running mechanism somewhat. The Michelover Group have once again delivered a very impressive and sure to be sought after Limited Edition. If I was asked whether to avoid it, consider it, or just go ahead and buy it, I conclude that in this case, I would just go ahead and buy it, as I actually have. It's a lovely model and it's sure to be right at home here at Dean Park. I certainly look forward to running it with the um, forthcoming Cavalex BBA steel carrier wagons which will depict it in British steel traffic as it used to haul these to and from Ravenscraig Steelworks. Okay, once the body has been unscrewed and slipped off, you see the, the chassis here with the the circuitry and there is provision there for a speaker. Um, this has got the connectors for the, the cab lights which are connected to the top of the, the um, cab on the cover. It's using the brass pickups, quite an old um, you know, way of doing it these days but it still works. And down the very front of the nose at both ends you've got the pickups here for the headlights. Okay, so all the kind of circuitry is attached to the inside of the 
the body and in the nose there. It's a reliable way of working. Um, it's tried and tested back when I've used it for a number of years. Here we've got the blanking plate, the 21 pin blanking chip. That just could have prized off the 21 pins there. And then we get our decoder. And you can see on the decoder, when you pick out the box, one corner will have a, a kind of blank, uh, unused pin. And that's the, the one that goes to the corner that matches on the, the pins on the circuit board. And that just slides into place. Make sure it's kind of sitting horizontally so it's you know making good connection with the pins. That's it. Keep this uh, in with your box and with your accessory pack or whatever. And it's a simple case of putting the body back on. Oh, thank you, well timed car horn there. Um, putting the body back on carefully so it's not to damage any of the, the paintwork. Okay, there we go. And then Turn upside down, put the screws back in. Simple. Okay, I've got it on the programming track now. Just incidentally, before you fit a DCC um, decoder chip to a new loco, run it in half an hour in each direction, just to bed the motor in a little bit, okay? Before you take the body off it and put the decoder in. Right, I'm using my ECOS, it's very straightforward. I say I put it on the programming track, it's set to DCC. I can flick this programming track between DC and DCC depending on what I'm doing, i.e. running it in or programming it. And first of all, I'm going to read CV1. And it should be 3. Yes, it's default value 3. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to program it to the actual address that I want it. I've got a space in my list at number 33. Um, I tried to group all the classes of locals together. So the, um, the class 37s tend to be grouped in the 30s. So I've got 33 here, I'm going to write CV1 to 33, write it, quick flash the lights, it's done. If I want to adjust the acceleration, which is CV3, first of all I'll read that, and the standard here is 6, which will go off like a rocket. So I change it to um, 100 on a, a back I mean, decoder, but I'm going to go 75 on the, the lens because it's a smoother, slower um, moving decoder for this, these locals, so I'm, I'm happy with 75. Um, I'll write that. Done, flash the lights, done. CV4, um, which I'll show you on the screen, is for the deceleration. Programming using the ECOS is simplicity in itself. Um, I've got CV4 highlighted here, and I'm going to read it first of all. And it tells me that the value to that is 5. Again, that would stop um, far too quickly to be prototypical. Um, so for the lens one, I'm going to use a, a value of 50 for that. And simply click on the right, and there we go, OK is displayed. So the loco has now been set to address 33. It has the acceleration 75, it has a deceleration 50. Um, and also I can go in, therefore, with this particular decoder and set the dimness of the cab lights and the headlights. Out of the box, the lights are too bright. You've got to kind of manipulate the CVs and the... Uh, make it more realistic, which I'll do before I put it on the layout. Each decoder will have slightly different CV addresses depending on what make it is, so I'm not going to um, you know, go into that with the lens. You just look at the instruction manual for that particular decoder that you have, and it will give you options for lights. After I'm finished, just press OK. There I now have the main control panel, and I would just call up um, number 33. Click on the button there. Type in 33, up it comes, 37026, press the tick there, and there we have 37026, ready to go on the layout. The Lens Silver 21 really is a super smooth um, decoder. I would recommend it to anyone.
If you're interested in this model, head over to the Mickelover Model Railway Group website and that's at www.mmrg.org.uk and what you want to do when you get there is click on the Limited Editions tab. It'll then give you an access link to the exclusive online shop which you click on. The model at the top is Dunrobin Castle and that was their previous Class 37 release, 37114, which also features at Dean Park. Uh, the link to that is at the top of the screen. If you scroll down, you'll find the coming soon. And on there you've got uh, 37026 Loch Awe, and they've also got the Eastfield Depot Breakdown uh, tool van at the right hand side there. So these two are due out very soon. As I said, early examples have arrived on these shores. So if you want to head over to the website and place your pre-order um, or interest in the actual item, you can do that. Just to make it clear that I am not part of an affiliation or any um, receiving any commission or anything from this, I just happened to uh, meet the guys at the Mickelover stand at the DEMU show last week and I had one of these on pre-order so they allowed me to get mine early. So I actually have paid for this model and it cost me 169 99. Hope you find this useful. Cheers just now.